Woo! <laughs> hey, Dell, thanks for your contribution. Yeah, I cut you a check, though. <laughs> Did it take check orders? What's going on, everybody? Welcome to a very special episode of Fung Bros Food. Woo! We are starting a brand new series. Whoa, me, Andrew, Nelson. Whoa, the we squad are the Hot Pop Boys. Hey, that's his new name. That's his new name. Because we do so many food videos together, we had to come up with a, a crew name. Yep. Hot Pop Boys. Hot Pop Boys. Hot Pop Boys is just the crew name for us three where we go explore different foods. Today, we are outside of Delicious Food Corner which is a Hong Kong restaurant, one of our favorite Hong Kong restaurants in the area. And it is delicious. This is actually their second location. This is the brand new one. Their original first one was, was in Monterey Park. Right, right, Monterey Park, which is like heavily Cantonese. Yeah. So it's like, you know, they made it in the Canto area first and then they moved up to the northern uh, part of Alhambra. This isn't San Gabriel. Oh, this isn't San Gabriel? I mean, well, huh. right. Being Cantonese ourselves, we always have our eye out for things that are popping that are Cantonese. Yeah. Because, you know, it's the culture we were raised with, the community that we come from. You guys ready to check it out? Yo. Hot Pop Boys. Woo. Thank you. Thanks. Yo, shout out to her. Hey, can you, you want to give another shout out? You know what? You want to give a shout out real quick? We're doing a video. Do you remember me? Tasty. Oh, Tasty. Nice to meet you. Yo, oh, thank sorry. you so much for watching our videos. Oh, Appreciate hi. it. Good yeah. to see you. Yeah, I do remember her. What up? Hey, drive safe. Right, Go All to right. Tasty. Go see. What was your name again? Rose. Go see Rose at Tasty. Ah! My vanilla 7 Up drink is overflowing right now. Hey, yo, Nelson, have you had this? Yeah. What, what's it called in Kanto? It's called Baksu Gongju. Gong oh, it's like Gong Ju Bang. Gong Bang. But in English translation, that's called Snow White. Snow White. Oh my gosh, the food is rolling out. You guys, originally we were gonna make this a Hong Kong food battle, but we just saw everything on the menu looks so good. And we just wanted to show you guys some dishes that we've never had on camera before. I still think the value's there. Like, we've Gingers. never shown this on camera. I don't actually believe we've actually shown this on camera. Not this particular dish, no. Just, this is Gong Chong Si, okay? which means ginger scallion soy sauce chicken. Show me some chicken. Oh, man. <laughs> Show me some chicken. Show it. That's a lot of chicken, too. Hey, huh. they're not skipping on the portions here, bro. But it, it has some ranch. Are you sure? Ooh, I'm getting this shot right here. This is crazy. Black chicken is so juicy. Oh my does it God. taste like ranch, kind of? It, oddly, it does have some ranch flavor to it. I can see why they call it ranch. It really tastes like ranch? You tell me what it tastes like, bro. That chicken's good. Watch out for the little bones in that chicken, though. I'm gonna crack the egg, man. Let me do a little full porn. I, I mean, actually have egg, egg, egg porn. It's not fried rice. It's not fried rice, but I feel like it always kind of tasted like one. Because it had the egg, it had the meat. It feels like a wet rice. All right, we got, All right so what's the difference this. between a wet rice and a fried rice? Wet you know? rice is basically like well, rice with gravy. Or okay. some type of sauce. That's the one thing about Chinese spots. And I'll say that's also why the meat is so good. Because they don't remove any bones. Triple bread, double layer, corned beef sandwich. Nice and delicate. Took off the crust, which is not a lot of people like. Now I think a lot of people are gonna be wondering why at a Chinese spot can you get a corned beef sandwich? That sounds like just some European stuff. But because Hong Kong has so much European influence, in particular British influence, you know, and British people, they eat corned beef, right? I'm gonna have a bite of the sandwich. You have one layer that's more um, unbeaten egg. One has more corned beef in it. Yep, this is yep. crazy, man. I'm gonna dip this Ooh. in the in the chicken ranch. No limits. There's no shame to your game. I can see why this spot is always so packed. Oh my gosh, I my chung right here. Describe that dish right there. This is cheng fun, chang fun in Mandarin. This is a rice noodle. But the way they make it, I'll just pop up the picture of how they make it. It's actually a very intensive process yeah. of how they make it. And then they put it in a sesame sauce. That almost peanut sesame. Like peanut sesame. So it almost tastes like peanut butter. And then hoisin, which is like 
a bunch of different seafood and it's sweet. So you can get this same dish actually on a cart in New York's Chinatown, but this one's obviously made with higher quality ingredients. Uh, this is the appetizer right here, look at this. Oh, dripping. So this has dried little shrimp in there, also with a lot of scallions, fresh scallions, never dried, never dehydrated, right there in your face. Mmm. All right, I'm gonna get and a piece. Got the hamai. The hamai is the. You can put a lot of things in the rice roll, but man, that's simple and delicious right there. Oh my gosh. Dried shrimp. Oh my gosh. This is a dish we've never had before. Um, we wanted to get it because it's a Toysan style dish. Toysan people were the first Chinese that were in America. You know, they were the first ones working at the railroads, you know, building a lot of the Chinatowns. And this is particularly a Toysan dish. So shout out to all the Toysan people out there. I've never had this before. Y'all, let's go. Mm. Mm. I, I don't know if that's brisket, guys. I, I'm gonna just say that's rib. Braised pork, braised beef. No, look, it's a braised beef short rib. Yeah, uh, I don't think it's brisket. brisket. I, I think brisket's different. I could have sworn I saw brisket on the menu. Definitely a rib. I mean, that, that's why they give you this big old bone right there. No, you ready? Yeah. They said this is the signature. So this is like a pizza slice right here. Right. Doing with the beef and the noodles, fried noodle pancake. Oh, that's the hottest. Oh. I'm gonna eat it. Shredded in a noodle. The noodles is like partially fried, but they're also soft in the middle. It's like you're eating a pancake, but when you bite into it, you mm. get a bunch of noodles. Mmm. Oh, that's interesting. Huh. Oh, okay. Mm. It's actually pretty good. It's like a fried vermicelli noodle pancake. No, what are we looking at? Basically, um, what do you call that bread thing inside? Fried curler. Curler. Yeah, curler. Curler. Yeah. Okay. So here we have the zha leng. Basically, is you have a cheng fun wrap with uh, Yao Zha Gui inside. It's basically in English, it's like a fried turtle. Cruller. Turtle. Cruller. Cruller. Basically, it's a fried cruller or dough stick. It's drenched in the same peanut and sesame sauce. It's one of Hong Kong's mo more signature dishes. Okay. This is a, a breakfast very, dish. It's a very, breakfast dish. Very HK. I like to drench it in sauce. Really good here. Sauce is good. Okay. I'll say this one, not the freshest cooler. I've had better versions of that dish, I'm not gonna lie. Oh. Everything else has been pretty good. Yo, creamy 7 up right here. That's Crazy. Snow White. This is a Snow White princess drink. I wanted to get it because I had seen vanilla ice cream, obviously, and root beer in Coca Cola. Makes sense, but in 7 up. What? Now will you do the honors of soy saucing the bow tie fun? Ho ho ho, okay. Here we go. This is the first hot pot of the Hot Pot Boys video. Saucing, saucing, <laughs> Like what's in it? This is y'all favorite dish of all time, maybe. Up there, it's up there, it's up there. No, 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 no. I like the steam dish. I don't like the bow tie fun version. I'll tell you, you got chicken, mushroom, sausages, and Chinese sausage. And then you got a little greens on top. You pour over this special soy sauce, which is not regular soy sauce. It's like a more sweeter, a Sweet little bit sauce. lighter soy sauce. And, and it's in a bow tie font. So you get a little bit of the crispy rice, you can tell right here. Peep this crispy rice right here. I'm not like an expert on it, but from what I know, it, it does use a lot more preserved vegetables. It's very stir fry-y. Um, I mean, what exactly is a toy san dish? I'm not exactly sure, but they call this a toy san dish. And I do know bow tie font generally is it known as a toy san dish so these are the two most toy san dishes we can find on the menu mm. Mm. i would say you spend about 25 percent of your canto meal picking bones out of your mouth uh, the meats off the bones picking around a small chicken bone is a little bit like a i don't mean this in any negative way like a, a villagey way to eat food or kind of like maybe not villagey what's a better word like a real rural way it does taste better yeah, I feel like it uh, brings back a lot of good memories growing up. My parents make it a lot, you know, as a kid. You know, it's, it's kind of fairly easy to make. You know, remember they had that song called Country Boys? I'm just a country boy, like, I don't know, I, I just completely made Bruh. it. Yeah. Good. This is the only battle that's going down today, guys. Yeah. You have the battle between condensed milk bread toast. Peanut butter with uh, condensed milk. And then you have the classic Bolo bao pineapple bun with a butter, butter slice. It's called bolo yao. Try bolo. Wow. Oh. Wow. That's buttery. That's dripping. That's dripping for you. 
Oh my gosh, it dripped on my finger. Mmm. Wow. Really good. Soft and flaky. Wow. Yo, that was amazing, man. It is. I actually had not eaten a bowl of bao in a while. Crispy, fluffy, buttery all over my mouth. So fluffy, y'all. Um. So fluffy, so crispy. Yo, how would I say that in Kanto? Oh, oh, fluffy is yun so. Ho yun so. Ho yun so. This is interesting because I want to say this is almost like on a sandwich bread. I would say French bread, crispy French. <laughs> Okay. Yo, that's, okay. That's one way to rip it. I thought you were gonna rip it this way. Ah, uh -huh, it didn't rip that good either, bro. <laughs> ah. Yeah, ooh, dripping. Guys, peanut butter with condensed milk. Hong Kong people know a thing or two about decadence. Mmm. Huh? The oh, flavor very Toasty. interesting. Wow. It tastes really good. Hong Kong people you know, being, you know, from Hong especially Kong, like, Especially from Hong Kong Island. Especially from island side, that's where our family's from. They do kind of like look at village Cantonese people as just like, man, they don't know what's going on. You know, and that's like true to some extent, but that's judging them on a city standard. Right. That's true. What if they're not living on the city standard? Because exactly. you know what? Because if they went to the village, they wouldn't know what was going on. You know what a lot of country people or village or rural people might say about the city is like, you guys are ruthless. You guys don't care about each other. Soulless. There's no community. There's there's yeah. no soul here. Look at us. Like we're so nice and like friendly and jovial with each B other. Bucolic. You know? Yeah. What? Bucolic. I just it's an SAT word. Why well, always never heard you use that word before and you use it in videos. <laughs> just it's crazy. Just thought of it in my mind. Well, no, I noticed I didn't even use it in a sentence. I just said it. Bucolic. You just said bucolic. Like I was supposed to. Understand what that You read it a lot because you, you, you read it a lot. In a you, you read it a lot in book reviews. <laughs> I thought you said blue collar. No, no, no. <laughs> yeah, it's tough though because we are generally like our field in media is more city skill centric. It's more city sure. based. Yeah. yeah, for sure. When you think of the big city, you think of entertainment, you think of fashion, you media, think of cameras. modeling, all that like green juice and stuff. That's what you think of when you think of the city. I think if people want to be country man, I just think that they got to know the whole spectrum. And if they settle in and just enjoy being country or rural, that's totally okay. But I think the problem is sometimes you're trying to do something to city, but with like country thinking, that's when you see there be a mismatch and it doesn't generally work. Like you gotta understand both perspectives. I'm just irrigating my chicken. Love. We could be different, but we could be cool. Hey, different, but together. I would like videos like this to spark discussion amongst friends. Don't only have this conversation with us. Uh, we have this conversation all the time and we're having it with you right now, but also have it with your friends too. Learn about your, your parents' background or your own background, where you're from, and share it with your friends. Be like, you know, where, where are your parents from? You know, how did they grow up? You know, like, were they, you know, did they grow up in the city, village, whatever, you know, share that experience with one another. We just did a video with Lisa Ling and one of the main things I take away from Lisa is that Asians gotta communicate more. And we gotta feel, each, feel other, each other, That's feel each other, Asians, and communicate man. more, man. That's Asians one like thing. I'm things, with you, Lisa. Hey, Asians like to keep things within themselves. Yeah. Like, they don't like to like talk more, like talk a lot, or share their, you know, their thoughts. They just like to keep it within themselves. So there's no way to really like move the discussion forward to a better place without letting, you know, expressing yourself. And, and everything's about saving face, you know, like, oh, don't talk about that. Oh, that's taboo. Oh, safe face. The blah blah blah. Oh, like, don't talk about that. It's like. Why? We're good, we're in America, it's cool. We can accept like certain parts of Western culture and, and deeply feel them in our soul. And I think expressing and feeling and just talking about things is absolutely one thing that we need to take. Hot Pot Boys. That's what happens at Hot Pot Boys. We eat food and we talk about a bunch of deep shit. Hey, low key guys, I got something funny. And I don't know, but uh, we ordered a lot of food and it's cash only. Oh, yeah, I, I don't really have enough cash. Oh. <laughs> hey, Nell, thanks for your contribution. Yeah, I got you guys. Hey, hey I, I cut you a check though. <laughs> Did it take check orders? All right, we gotta go get some cash and pay for this food. Yo, Let's get it cooking. Yo, what it was? <laughs> Hot pot boys. <laughs> and we'll go like this and then flip it. Yeah, I'm flip it Wait, Hot pot boys. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Three, two, one. Hot pot boys. Woo.